Hey everybody and welcome to Zero Calvin. Today we're going to explore how to export DAS morphs into Character Creator so that you'll be able to use a DAS morph in Character Creator on any normal standard Character Creator character you want. So basically to export you know something like this and bring it in and be able to use it as a slider right here in Character Creator. So if you've gone down this route and you've tried to do it yourself, you may think that you could do something like dial up the slider and then go here to exports, uh, give it a name. And then if you look here, then under the list of what's included in the character, uh, the type morphs, you see, uh, you know, some of these elf ear morphs, but the export is not used. So you're like, oh, okay, well, no problem. I'll just add add a rule here, tell to export anything with elf, and then we see yes, and you export it out, and then when you bring it into Character Creator, you still don't see it in this list. The reason for that is because um, all the Genesis models in DAS and the Character Creator models actually use uh, different topology, different meshes. So you'll notice like in this DAS mesh, this edge loop loops around here, but if we go over to Character Creator, it doesn't. They're completely different meshes. So what happens is when, um, these morphs are made for this mesh because each one of these vertices has a number and the mesh meshes are basically telling each one of these vertices to move in a certain direction. So it's taking like with the elf ears, it knows to take certain ones of these and move them to a different position. The problem is if you try to apply these morphs to Character Creator, this it doesn't understand like these vertices are something completely different. So it doesn't understand what it is. It doesn't bring it in. It doesn't use it. It doesn't know what it's doing. So in order for us to bring a mesh from DAS Studio into Character Creator, we have to teach it sort of the old fashioned way. So in Character Creator, to create a morph slider, you have to give it a before and after to compare to. And then basically it knows the difference between those two is the morph that you want. So typically you would start with a base character and then you would export it out, modify it, and bring it back in morphed. And the program though compares the two and it says, oh, okay, you want to stretch the ears out. So that is the approach we're going to take, except we're going to use um, DAS characters that have been converted using Transformer as the before and after. So if you don't know exactly what I mean, just follow along and we'll see the process. So I'm doing this with a Gen 8 male. This will work for Genesis 9 too, as long as it's something standard that Transformer understands. So it can't have any kind of anatomical additions to it because those are geographs. So no geographs, no custom eyes, no like custom tails or things that have been grafted on, no geographs, okay? The best thing you can do to make your life easier is just use a base character. So just the, the base Genesis 8 or the Genesis 9 or whatever. So with that said, I loaded in the basic Gen 8 male here and I'm gonna export him right out with no morphs whatsoever. So I go to exports. I'm just gonna rewrite this. So these are all the checkboxes that I typically use. Um, you might not need props, you might not need animation, but it's fine to leave those checked. Um, also, when using Transformer, it's probably best to leave this embed textures unchecked. Uh, it just gives you options down the road. If this is unchecked, then it basically is a signal for Transformer to go and search and grab the, the good DAS textures, um, you know, from inside the file. If you embed it, it's gonna use the embedded, try to use the embedded textures and these embedded textures are only a subset of the texture files so it's actually better to have it unchecked if you want good textures it's counterintuitive kind of but typically I just leave this unchecked we'll hit accept that exports in a couple of seconds and then we pop over to character creator we're gonna use transformer either through here or through here we're gonna pick CC3 plus and load in that file. I usually always click advanced to 
just because it gives you more options. Now for our purposes, we're not gonna bake the body textures. If this was a character that you wanted to keep and use in the future, then you would of course bake the body textures and choose 4K. But we're not gonna do that because that takes so much time. We're only concerned about the shape, so it doesn't really matter. Now that we brought them in, we immediately wanna save this project. So we're gonna go to save project as, and we're just gonna call it G8 mail base save okay cool you can actually start a new project again okay so that's our base like our reference figure now we need the morphed figures so we'll do it with two different uh, morphs uh, first we'll do an elf ear morph so we'll just dial up this elf ear morph here we're going to go to file export We use all the same settings. And just like with the previous one, we bring it in to Transformer. And there he is, same figure, but now he has elf ears. Now, here's the, here's the trick. Instead of saving this project, we're gonna just save this character. So we go to File, Export, and we export it as an eye avatar. Now we could start a new project again. We don't need to save this project. For our second morph, we'll do something more extreme and we'll morph the whole body into a gorilla. Okay. And again, we bring him in through Transformer, just like always. Okay, there he is, he has a gorilla shape now. File, export, I avatar. Gorilla. So now that we've exported a base character and two different morph characters for comparison, let's create morph sliders for them. So to start off, we need to load that project with the uh, Genesis 8 male base character in it. Okay, there's our plain Jane Gen 8 male. And we want to create, let's say we want to create elf ears. So that's going to be under head, ear. And we want to create a slider that's going to be somewhere along here. To do that, we go to create. You would think maybe head and body morph sliders, but you actually use the morph slider editor. We're gonna call this Daz Elf Ears 01. It's actually in head. So by default, it's actor head. So actor head. We actually wanna do it in the subcategory of ear. So we can just type in ear here. So it'll be actor head ear and it'll put it in the correct place for us. So we have a source and a target. Uh, source is actually like the reference. So that's gonna be the current morph. That's the one that's loaded in the project. For the target, we wanna use, um, that's gonna be the morphed character that we wanna like morph and create a morph based off of. So target morph, for this target morph, that's the, that's the character that contains the morph that we want to create. So we're going to use a file for that. And we load in our iAvatar that we saved with the elf ears. Now before you click OK, there's two checkboxes that you might want to investigate. The first one is adjust bones to fit morph. This one is very important for a lot of the time. For elf ears, it isn't gonna do anything for us. But you'll see for like our second model, where the shape, uh, 
and length of our um, limbs change drastically, we're going to want to click that. What that will do is um, if we don't click this, the program will leave the skeleton as is. Um, which means, say, if we did our gorilla character and we left the skeleton as is, would that gorilla character is more compact. The skeleton would actually be outside of the body. So when we animated it, it's going to have really weird effects. So most of the time, I would say just click this just to be safe. It really isn't going to hurt anything. Um, I'm actually going to leave it unclicked for the ears because there's no bones in ears. There's nothing that's going to affect us. So it's fine for me to leave it unchecked for something simple like that. For the gorilla one, though, I will check it. And just for laughs, at the end, we can do it without it checked with the gorilla one, and I'll, we'll see if anything weird happens. You can kind of see like what would happen if the bones weren't adjusted. The other one I like to click on is this Apply to Current Character. So what that'll do is, after it creates the slider, it'll automatically dial it up and apply it to the character so we can immediately see the effects. So I, I pretty much always check that. we we'll click OK. And boom, our guy, our guy has elf ears. What you might want to do also while you're here is this is still in base resolution. So you might want to go over here and subdivide a little bit just to make everything look a little cleaner. So now we've got elf ears. They look pr pretty close to me. You notice the slider loads in here. So boink, boink. We now have an elf ear slider from Daz, which is cool. So now we can do our Gorilla Morph. So I'm going to dial this back out. You want to go to Currently Used, make sure nothing's here, right? And we want to do the same thing for our Gorilla. So that should probably be under Actor, Body, and Full Body. So I usually like to just highlight it to refresh my memory as to what it, where it is when I'm creating my slider. So let's load in our Gorilla character now. So again, go to Create, Morph Slider Editor. We're going to call this Daz G8 Male Gorilla. It's going to be a body morph. And we're going to put it under full body. Incidentally, you can use a path that doesn't exist here. So if you wanted all your Daz things under one place, you can just say like Daz and then subdivide it into full body like that. Or even the other way around. So we can have it Daz, full body. I mean, we can call it actor, body, full body. So it's in there. And we can have a sub category of Daz. So we'll do that just for laughs on this one. Again, current morph and target is file. Pick our gorilla. And we're going to do adjust bones to fit morph and apply it and click OK. And boom, just like that, we got our gorilla guy in there. And we see that the morph works perfectly. You also notice that we have now have this Daz subcategory here. So that's pretty cool, right? If you ever need to change where these are located, you can click on Edit here and just edit um, either the place or the name. Click Replace, and it'll move it around to wherever you want it or change the name. If you want to delete it, you can go to Settings, Delete Slider. Also note that, you know, by default it goes from 0 to 100, but if you wanted one of those ones that, if you wanted to change the maximum and minimums, you can do it here. So that's really it. That's the whole process. It's a little bit time consuming, but it's not that hard. And you only have to do it once, and then you'll always have these sliders to use with any character you want. So, for instance, we can use Kevin here, and we can start dialing in the slider for him too. Now, if we max it out, some things don't look quite right. Because it was based on a different character. But we can still use it to some degree. 
we might have to slightly modify things because it was based on a different character, but you can see it still works. And that's a drastic example, but we can also look at our elf ears as well. So let's try the Daz elf ears. Boink. So they work fine. So now for bonus points, let's see what I mean about adjusting the bones. If I go to window here, I can turn on the bone manager, which loads up in on my other screen here, and I can show the bones of the character. I'm just going to move this out of the way. So now his bones are visible. And if we transform in, him into a gorilla, you can see that the gorilla shape's being dialed in and his bones are moving and adjusting to fit inside of that character. That's what we want. And that ensures that as we put him in different poses, that ensures that when we put him in different poses, he's gonna work correctly. And indeed, everything does seem to look okay. So now let's create the slider again without adjusting the bones. So everything's the same as I did before, but I'm gonna uncheck this adjust bones. Click okay. Okay, and there's the character. And you might think, okay, well, he looks fine. Looks like it still worked. This versus this looks the same. But let's take a look at the bones. Now as I adjust this in, oh, what the fuck, they're adjusting. Well, that's super interesting. It looks like it went and adjusted them anyway, which was nice of it, I guess, but it's kind of weird because if it's gonna ignore me, then why have that checkbox after all? So weirdly enough, it's actually doing it anyway. Um, which I'm not sure is a feature or a bug, but if it's gonna do it anyway, why even ask, right? So I guess, forget what I said, but it's probably still good practice for you to check it uh, in most cases, because we wanna explicitly have it do it and not rely on it doing it by accident, I guess. Just know that in past versions though, the skeleton would have been left looking exactly like this, and only the body would have changed shape. So, hmm, weird. Anyway, thanks a lot for sticking to the end, everybody. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you can bring Daz Morphs over to Character Creator. Thanks again for watching. Cheers.